Merci, Rémi Kirion, pour cette introduction de moi, Julie. Merci à vous tous, ce soir, de m'accueillir. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, Adina Kikwak, Kakina Adichnabek. Merci de m'accueillir ici ce soir au gala d'ouverture de la septième conférence, la neuvième, la neuvième, excusez-moi, la neuvième conférence des politiques euh, scientifiques canadiennes. C'est un gala auquel je n'aurais pas pu me soustraire, car j'ai le plaisir ici, dans cette salle, de connaître beaucoup de monde. Beaucoup de personnes que j'admire énormément, mes salutations les plus sincères à vous tous. I am very honored to be able to address so many friends and colleagues and truly humbled that I can address such a audience of deciders, policymakers, scientists, scholars, students of such depth and talent. Thank you for having me. Monsieur Hariri, You almost stole my line because you were talking about the fact that now science policy is, is something that we understand and know about, in some circles perhaps. But I tell a story uh, that is totally unscientific. Actually, I invented it, so it's definitely not scientific. <laughs> about uh, this uh, cocktail hours that we have, you know, before dinner like this one, just like you had a little bit before, And uh, to demonstrate how far we still have to go in the general public for science, science and technology, to become just as respected as talks about the weather or the less, latest success, if you're from Ottawa, or Ply, if you're from Montreal, of the local hockey team. Oh, no. how far we still have to go for, for, for science to be a talk at the cocktail hours. And the story goes like this. We're at the cocktail hour and we're chatting and then we hear the Fifth Symphony of Beethoven. And then someone says, oh, that is, I love Beethoven, great composer. And then someone says, Beto who? <laughs> and you will all look at that person and say, well, that person really doesn't have much musical culture, let alone any culture. But if you are the same cocktail and someone is dissertating about neutrino flavors, tau, muons, electrons, and the difficulty of detecting them, then you will say, oh, is that a new energy drink? And everybody will not react. And if that person says when they realize, that, uh, oh, you know me, I don't understand anything about science, I don't understand anything about physics, and you'll say, okay, that's okay, we'll, we'll forgive that. Well, j'ai hâte qu'un jour, nous soyons capables d'aller dans un cocktail et de ne plus avoir à s'excuser parce qu'on aime la science, parce qu'on parle de science, parce qu'on veut discuter de la dernière sous-routine en C++, ou la dernière... Euh, trouvailles de ces astrophysiciens, de ces physiciens. Il est incroyable qu'on soit encore aujourd'hui à penser que les scientifiques, les ingénieurs, les technologues et les informaticiens sont des gens différents. Perhaps one day, those of us, so many here in this room, that live and breathe science, or just simply likes to talk about it and understand the power of science, that we will no longer be considered a special, weird, geek. Huh? I am a geek, though. And that we will be able to claim that we, as a people, as a nation, as a humanity, we are a science literate species, right? And by science literacy, I don't mean that we should all have a math degree, or d'être un chercheur en neurosciences, or d'avoir un spécialiste en physique fondamentale, or a géographe féminin. 
It doesn't mean that. It means that we are capable of understanding and later discuss how relevant science is to environmental, economical, social issues, to use our critical thinking and our power of analysis, and to make informed decisions based on, oh, guess what? Data, evidence, and facts that it can be corroborated by other people everywhere on the planet. So that we all feel responsible for the world we live in, and that we all take upon ourselves to be interested and to act upon all these issues that we face, locally and globally, and feel confident that science is part of the tools, actually an undisputable tool, to find solutions and to move forward. Unfortunately, we're not there. On a encore beaucoup de chemin à faire. Parce que, pouvez-vous croire qu'encore aujourd'hui, plusieurs terriens, soi-disant éduqués, education is not a guarantor here, pense que ou questionne que les vaccins sont encore sont efficaces ou non plusieurs personnes pensent aussi et se demandent si ah oh, le fluor peut-être que c'est dangereux pour la santé et les dents des humains can you believe that still today in learned society and in houses of government unfortunately we're still debating and still questioning whether humans have a role in the earth warming up, or whether even the earth is warming up, period. That we are still debating and still questioning whether life was a divine intervention or whether it was coming out of a natural process, let alone, oh my goodness, lo and behold, random process. Yet so many people, I'm sure you know many of them, still believe want to believe that maybe taking a sugar pill will cure cancer if you will it good enough, and that your future and every single one of people here's personality can be determined by looking at planets coming in front of invented constellations. <laughs> But the problem is the explosion of communication means, the internet, social media, 24-hour news. They have open access to information to more people than we can say, and that is a good thing. They have enriched, enlarged, and broadened the public discourse. Democracy and society have always gained from learned debate, whether it is political, scientific, economical. But we have to remain vigilant, and we cannot let ourselves fall into complacency, and we must be vocal all the time, everywhere, every single one of us, so that we can deconstruct misinformation and don't end up in an echo chamber where we're just listening to what we want to hear. Et ce phénomène arrive partout avec l'explosion de l'information. Notre infrastructure de recherche et de politique scientifique, nos programmes d'éducation, notre vision d'avenir doivent constamment se renouveler. Et il faut continuer à mettre de l'emphase sur l'importance de la science, sur l'importance de prendre des décisions basées sur les données, sur les faits, et d'utiliser notre tête et notre esprit critique pour faire avancer les choses. Et c'est la raison pour laquelle une conférence, la neuvième conférence, comme celle-ci, celle qui nous réunit ici ce soir, est tellement importante. Vous représentez ici la crème de la recherche et de l'innovation. Vous êtes parmi ceux qui peuvent faire une différence. Vous êtes les privilégiés qui possédent les leviers pour améliorer les choses, faire avancer les connaissances, et ce, dans toutes les couches de la société. But this will require a vision, commitment and leadership. Three ingredients which I believe are in Avogadro's number. Right here in this room. Mais ce soir, vous êtes ici pour célébrer l'excellence et la recherche, l'importance de la politique scientifique partout au pays. Je laisserai donc euh, dans les mains très compétentes de mes amis Rémi Corion et Art McDonald, ainsi qu'à Neil Turok, qui va, 
entertain you a little later and speak about things like uh, exoplanet, curiosity, gravitational waves, so that he will give you ample information for the next time you are at the cocktail hour. Bonsoir, messieurs, dames. Merci.